morning. Welcome to Day Spring Ministries, our 10 o'clock a.m. Sunday morning worship service. We're happy to have you join in with us on this morning. Uh, we thank God for you, and I just want to allow you time to come into the room so that you will be able to partake with us on this morning. We thank God for you all. Um, if you like something that you have heard on this morning uh, uh, from the message that Pastor Bill is getting ready to deliver, then we want you to press like, love, share. So show some love. Let us know that you are with us, that you are listening. Most of all, we want you to share so that we can get this word out to others. So other people can be strengthened in the things of the Lord and strengthened in the word of God. Amen. This is the month of February, and we just want to say this is an exciting month. This month is Black History Month. Black History Month month and we have our awesome pastor looking like a prince on this morning when you see him you're going to see the great man of god he is through his african roots he loves the lord he's a powerful man of god and i tell you i had to fight with him to put that hat on but he looks like an african prince he go, he's going way back to his roots and i thank god for pastor bill on this morning in addition to it being black history month and you will be hearing about some of the black presence in the Bible as we go out throughout this month. It will also be Valentine's Day on the 14th of February. And I call Valentine's Day Lover's Day. So don't forget to send some love, to give some extra love to somebody that means something special to you on February 14th. God bless you and I love you on this morning. Reminder, Faithfulness is the price of the crown. Let us all do our very best to support the entire program of our church. Well, this morning, the message title is Beyond the Veil. And our lesson text is taken from Exodus 34, 29 through 35. And I will be reading from the New Living, uh, the New Living Testament Bible. And it reads thus. When Moses came down Mount Sinai carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. So when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of Moses' face, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them and asked Aaron and all of the leaders of the community to come over, and he talked with them. Then all of the people of Israel approached him, and Moses gave them all the instructions the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he covered his face with a veil. But whenever he went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people whatever instructions the Lord had given them. And the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face. So he would put the veil over his face until he returned to speak with the Lord. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. And we thank you all for making Day Spring Ministries your place of worship on this morning. Please come back and worship with us. I give you Pastor Bill. Amen. Praise, praise God. God bless you this morning. Thank you. Mm. God bless you this morning. So Thank good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I know we're still sheltering in place, many of us, and those of you that are on here, you probably at home, if not in your vehicle. Um, <clears throat> truly, we give honor to God who's the head of our life, and we just thank God for another day. Amen. This is Black History Month, and in celebration of Black History Month, celebrating our roots, um, yes. Got on the attire. I hope this is all right and not distracting to anybody. <laughs> Amen. It's not what I normally do, but, you know, hey, we're in it. Amen. Amen. We're in it. We're in it. I'm proud of where I come from. I'm proud of the legacy yes. of so many people who I have met and known in my life. And then those I don't know, those we find in the history books. Yes. Amen. And those in the Bible. So let us pray. Heavenly Father. We love you today. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you, God, how you have blessed us and kept us. God, we thank you that even through this pandemic, so many of us have not have not been impacted with colds or flus or any such things, God. Even though we know many people who have been sick and recovered and many who gotten sick and did not recover, oh God. We pray for those families continually, yes, oh God. Yes, Father. But we do thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We pray and 
We, we thank you for how you are a keeper, O oh God. And so, God, we do our best to walk in wisdom as we celebrate this month, Black History Month. God, let us dig up the nuggets that you have given us through the history of time to share information about those who, against all odds and against many circumstances, God, stood strong in faith, stood strong in opposition, and became great achievers and got the victory. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen and amen. amen. I want to talk to you this morning from a topic of beyond the veil. Beyond the veil. You know, when we were... Listening as Lady T was speaking, she talked about Moses coming down from the mountainside and how he was radiant and, and, and he covered his face when dealing with the people, but he would uncover his face when he'd go up and talk to God. You know, so many times there are situations to where people cover who they are. You know, you can meet somebody and, and who they really are, you may not never get a chance to meet that person mm -hmm. because they're covering who they are. Amen. We're talking about beyond the veil this morning. Yes, yes. So many situations in life and over the history of time, people have tried to cover incidents to hide who they are. Amen. But then there's the positive side of things. Moses had an encounter with God. And because he did not want to frighten the people, he mm -hmm. covered who he was. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there was a necessary factor because he didn't want to scare the people. Sometimes when God does something in your life, yes. you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, it's, a, it's an honor yes. to know that, and that God has done something. But sometimes we have the tendency to cover what God has done. All right. Amen. So this morning, we want to talk to you about beyond the veil. Mm -hmm. Amen. How I many you know that in our situations here, Moses put this veil on because there was a change that took place. All right. There was a situation that he had experienced, and, and even though he was the same man that went up to the mountain, came down from the mountain, there was a change that took place. And quite often, sometimes when the change takes place, it's more visible in our hearts than it is in our lifestyle. It's more visible in our hearts than it is in our appearance, the way we appear yes. to people. Yes. And so there's a change that takes, takes place. There was a transfiguration, so to speak. Yes. You know, when we read our scriptures and we look to the Gospels, the book of Luke, we are very familiar, many of us, about the story of the transfiguration. Yes. Jesus was on the same mountain Moses was, Mount Sinai. Yes. And he went up to talk to God. And while he was there, he took a couple of his disciples with him. And Peter was one of them. I believe it was Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. And while they were there, there was everything, there was a light that, 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 that took place. And, and everything became radiant. Yes. And as things became radiant and the men began to tremble, those who were with Jesus, mm -hmm. there was a voice that spoke and there were three people that were there. It was Jesus, Elijah, and Moses. Yes. And Peter said, it is good for us to be here. Uh -huh. Then had not knowing what else to say, he said, well, maybe we ought to build three temples, one for you, Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Then a cloud came in and covered everything up. And, and in that cloud, they heard a voice and God spoke and said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Amen. So God gave a message to Peter, James, and John. He said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. In other words, God gave Jesus a message while he was there on the mount. Yes. There was something that had happened. That's why we call it the Mount of Transfiguration. There's a internal working in the lives of people when they give their hearts to God. Yes. There's a transfiguration that takes place. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. And so there's something that must happen somewhere on the inside where a change takes place, yes. where one is transfigured from sinner to saint. All right. Amen. I said where one is transfigured from sinner to Yes, the saint. Yes, Amen. Yes. No, not like Saint Mary and Saint Joseph and all of that. But I'm saying something happened on the inside where he's born again. He's a new creature in Christ, and and what have happened or who he was before has changed, and now he's become new. Amen. Old things yes. have passed away, and all things have become new. Amen. He still still may look the same. Mm -hmm. He still may sound the same. He still may walk the same or talk the same. 
Hallelujah. But some of the things he used to do, he certainly don't do no more. And sometimes when he feels under pressure, he runs from that situation. He covers himself. Amen. He gets behind the veil that God has given him. Hallelujah. When we look at our text this morning, when we look at our text, we see change takes place. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give you an insight on that word change. Yes, yes. Change. To exchange one thing for another thing. To make different. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can go in the kitchen and you put some eggs in water. Put a little salt in it and, and a little meal in it and, and, and whip it up. It changed from the components that it was into what one might call a batter. And then you put that batter in a pan and you put that pan in the oven yeah. and put it under heat for a few minutes and, yes. and or a little while. And change takes place. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you following me this morning? All right. So let's go to our text. Let's go to our text. Exodus 34, 29 through 35. I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. Hallelujah. My wife read it, I believe, out of the New Living Testament Scripture, but I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. And it says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, carrying two tablets of testimony, mm -hmm. he didn't know that the skin of his face glowed because he had been speaking with God. Uh -huh. Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses and saw his radiant face yes. and held back afraid to get close to him. Mm -hmm. 31, 32 says, Moses called out to them, Aaron and all the leaders in the community, and the community came back and Moses talked to them. Mm -hmm. Later, all the Israelites came up to him and he passed on the commands that God had given him, everything that God had told him on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. When Moses finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face but when he went into the presence of God to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. When he came out and told the Israelites what it had been commanded, mm -hmm. they would see Moses' face and his skin glowing. And then he would again put the veil on his face yes. until he went back to speak to God. In other words, when he came down from talking to God, he put a cover over his face. Yes, yes. Very similar to that which you see a lot of people wearing nowadays. They're, they're wearing a mask to protect themselves from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Moses was wearing a mask to not offend the people or frighten the people because there was a, a color change. There was a change that took place mm -hmm. and the people didn't understand it and they were frightened by what they did not understand. Mm -hmm. You know, transformation sometimes is not always good. Okay. Transformation sometimes can be a bad thing. Okay. When we are changed or transformed, what can be turned into what, what, what can be considered a good thing sometimes for many can be an affront. You get saved and those who you know and love, who those who you hang out with, mm -hmm. you know, and they say, come on, let's go do this. Let's go over here. Let's go there. And you say, well, no, that's not really how I plan on spending my day today. Uh -huh. And they have the tendency to be offended by that. Say, what, now you better than me? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. That is just that there was a change that took place. And those things I used to desire, I don't desire anymore. Those things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Yes. And so there's a change that takes place. And so those things that sometimes transforms, God is moving us forward in a way that he's trying to bring out the good in us. Yes, yes. He's trying yes, to make yes. us better. He's trying to bring us in a situation where it adds value to our lives. Yes. Amen. When we come in contact with God, God does something. I said, when we come in contact with God, yes. God does something. You yes. come into the presence of the Almighty, and God brings this change. Sometimes yes. people will say, I see the glow of the Lord on you. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I remember when I got saved, and people would say that to me. I looked the same to me. I felt <laughs> different. I, I, I knew something had happened and something had changed, but I didn't recognize in my countenance that something has changed. But throughout the years, I've seen people who have gotten saved, and I recognize that 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 purity, that glow that was on them, that 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 something that manifested, they looked different than how they normally would look. Even though they yes. look the same, they yes. look different. Yes. Are you hearing me on this one? Yes, sir. You know, when we go into the presence of God, yes, we need to bring, so to speak, our A game. All right. I said we need to bring our A game. We can't come in jiving, manipulating, lying, cheating. God, if you do this, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't scheme on God. Right. We have to get real with God. We need to bring our A game. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to stand in faith, believing that God is who he says he is. Yes. You know, first we have to realize that no man can come to God unless God calls him. Yes. And then when God calls him and he begins to clean us up and change things, there's some things that we have to set down. Even though God saved me and delivered me, I have to learn how to walk in that deliverance. Yes, yes. I have to learn how to stand and, and dig deep into my salvation that God has given me. I don't I don't work to get saved, but because I'm saved, I begin to look at how I'm living my life and yes. see what things I can set down. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. So I just hope you're following me this morning. Yes, sir. As we yes, look sir. at black history, you know, over the history of our lives, you know, many of us have been told and have been taught mm -hmm. in order to be successful in this life. Uh -huh. Because you are black, because you are a person of color, because you're going to deal with racial discrimination, you need to be twice as good. You need to be twice as smart, twice as dependable, and in many cases, twice as talented. I see. Hallelujah. We've been told these things, twice as good, twice as smart, twice as dependable, and twice as talented, which sometimes seems like a lot of pressure to put on a young person growing up going to school. Yes. Sometimes it seems like a lot of pressure to put on an individual. Yes. But you know, when we look at life and we look at how things have happened here in this country, uh -huh. we find that those things can be true. You, in order to succeed, you have to be twice as smart as the next person. In other words, you have to know what you're talking about and have a good understanding of what it is that you're speaking about. Always. You have to be twice as good. Sometimes you have to run harder and faster than the guy next to you trying to run. Yes. You have to be you have to be twice as dependable. You know, I learned in working not just to show up at work on time, but to get there early. And then my success in working was brought on from being where I was supposed to be doing what I was supposed to do mm -hmm. while I was supposed to be doing it. I see. You know, I got there a few minutes early to check out what needed to okay. be done. So when it was time to start, I was ready and prepared. Yes. I, when it was time to leave, I didn't just jump up and run out because it was time to go. But I said, make sure that I've set everything up uh -huh. for the next phase or the next person coming in behind me uh -huh. so it would be a smooth Transition, transition because everybody doesn't do everything the same so you have to be sure that when there's a change that takes place uh -huh. your change is done properly all right amen somebody all right follow me this all morning. right uh-huh come on now, now i was reading on this week and i found out that people talking about being twice as good twice as smart twice as dependable twice as talented there was an article in the papers a while back the national bureau of economic research shows that when it comes to getting and keeping good jobs, mm -hmm. the notion of being twice as smart, twice as talented, twice as, as, as good is, is not just the same, mm. but it's been proven in the working world. You can get a job. Mm -hmm. You have everything on paper that says you qualify, mm -hmm. or you can know the right person to get in through the door. Yes. And quite often you'll find that it's not who you know, but it's what you know. And in some circumstances, it's not for some people, it's not what they know, it's who they know. Mm -hmm. And so it does, the game doesn't always play fair, especially when you're a person of color. Now, I'm not knocking the person of color, neither am I trying to amplify racism. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you look at Scripture, Scripture says this, you know, that, and, and, and reminds us that we need to be careful about how we carry ourselves and we need to be smart on how we do our dealings. Scripture says this in Jeremiah 1323. Uh-huh. Says, can a leopard change his spots or an Ethiopian mm -hmm. change his skin? Okay. But when you read that in the original language, it doesn't say can a leopard change his spots. Mm -hmm. It says, would a leopard mm -hmm. change his spots? Mm -hmm. Not can an Ethiopian change his skin, but would uh, uh, Ethiopian change your skin. If you're comfortable in who you are, why would you change anything? All right. Some things you can't change. My name is Bill Penland. That's who I am. I probably could change my name. But my complexion is what it is, and outside of a tan or avoiding sunlight, that's not going to change much. My ethnicity is what it is, and I can lie about it, but if I lie about it, it's not going to change anything. Right. Hallelujah. Right. The only person who can change anything is God, and if God made us this way, yeah. he's not going to change us time. who we are. Take your but time, he sir. expects us to deal from the perspective he gave us. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says that he's given every man a measure of faith. Yes. And God wants us to stir up that faith and begin to work things according to his will so he can work in us the will to do yes. of his good pleasure. Right? Yes. Hear me Come this on morning. now. Teach, Pastor. Listen. But as black folks, as people, not just black folks, but as people, mm -hmm. we need to look at the idea that color in Scripture, color in the Old Testament, the concept of it, of the Old Testament, was not a concern with race as much as it was class and culture. Mm -hmm. They were more concerned about the level in which you were living opposed to the color mm -hmm. of your skin. Mm -hmm. I said they were more concerned about the level of life that you were living opposed to the color of your skin. Okay. Amen. They were concerned about character. Amen. If I can say that like that, they were concerned about character. They were concerned mm -hmm. about class. They were concerned about culture. And so today I want you to understand that color is not really your issue, but color is an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Color is not really your issue, at least I hope it's not, but color is an issue. You know, so when we look at life, Mm -hmm. And we see how things happen. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, and I've been in this thing for a little while now. Yes. I see that as a Christian, some folks are yellow. I say some folks Skin are yellow. Mm -hmm. And they're yellow because they are afraid to go to God. Oh, okay. That kind of yellow. They're, they're, they're afraid to go to God. Okay. You know, God has everything. He made everything. He knows everything. And some folks are too yellow to go to God. Okay. There are folks out there that are pink. They're too soft oh my to God. deal with life and to bring life to, to God. They're, 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 they're saying, well, God, get, you know, this is how it is, and so I'm just going to stay right here. I they're see. caught up in their feelings. They're pink. They're caught up in their feelings, yeah. and they're afraid to move forward to God or won't, won't move forward to God because they felt like I'm comfortable Right where I am. I am. I see. They're, they're, they're not really ready to deal with the things and the challenges and the obstacles that are in front of them, not believing that God can help them through and yes. over them. Yes. Yes. Amen, yes. somebody. And then some folks are. Take your time. Just, 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 they're playing white. I said they're playing white. Pretending to be innocent. Pretending to be pure. Mm -hmm. Pretending to, 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 to be something that they're not, they're not honest uh -huh. with themselves. Mm -hmm. Those are the folks who want to manipulate. I said they're playing like those are the folks uh -huh. who want to manipulate their way into certain situations. There's not a pure thought in their conscience sometimes. Wow. There's not a pure thought in their mind. Wow. They're playing like they're innocent. But all the while, mm. the scripture warns us, says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. See, the ungodly sometimes want to play like they, they're righteous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're not righteous. Okay. You know, you know, blessed is the man who said it not in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those who are scornful pretend like they know everything, like they got the answer and you're doing it wrong. Uh -huh. Amen. You know, blessed is the man who don't stand in the way of sinners. Mm -hmm. Now, sinners, you know, we know sinners are going to do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Whether they're right or wrong, they're just going to do it. They're locked in. Okay. And some people are pretending like, well, you know, I didn't know that was, I wasn't supposed to do that. I didn't know this would happen if I did that. Uh -huh. Come on, now we 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 are people who are intelligent enough to realize if we look far enough down the road, we can see the bumps in the road. Right. We right. can see the holes in the road, the pot rolls in the road. Hallelujah. The you see a snake yeah. rolling yeah. across the street, and you know to get yes. out the way. Snakes. The Bible says a prudent man sees evil and hides himself. Yes. You know, but when you've been close to God, when you've been close to God, you understand that it's. God is drawing you in, and it's time Jesus. for a color change. All it's right. time for okay. a color change. It's time for transition. It's time for yeah. transfiguration. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that God will see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. I said, yes. he said, let your light so shine before men that you, that, that you can glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus was on Mount Transfiguration. Hallelujah. And we know Jesus was sinless. Moses was on Mount Sinai, and he dealt with God. And I believe the only reason Moses was able to deal with God in that fashion because yeah. God could see his heart and knew that he qualified uh -huh. to be up there to hear the word of God. Are you hearing me, somebody? All right, Hallelujah. all right. If you're following me on this and you're enjoying this, come on, give God a hand praise, give a like, give a heart, maybe share it with somebody. Hallelujah. Listen, when I think about this and I think about black history,
Yes. Your God is calling us. He said, let your light so shine before men. Yes. He's calling us to a place of purity. He said, let your light so shine before men. Yes. He's calling us to a place of responsibility. Yes. He said, let your light so shine before men. He's calling us to a place to where, to where he, 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 you know, the Bible says if you walk right before the Lord, yeah. he'll withhold no good thing from you. So walking upright, what does that entail? Uh -huh. That means investing yourself in what it is that you're trying to do. Yes. You're pushing yourself, even though we're not perfect, you're pushing yourself to be perfect in what it is that you endeavor. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are a hairdresser, you try and learn all the tricks and techniques to mm -hmm. doing hair. And if you are a painter, you try and learn all the tricks and techniques Strokes. to doing mm -hmm. a painter. If you're a mechanic, an auto mechanic, you learn everything about the vehicles that you possibly can for the vehicles that you are going to work on. Yes, Hallelujah. If you sense. are an attorney, what do you do? You learn the law, the law yeah. to get a great understanding of what's applicable and what's not applicable in yes. certain situations. Yes. Yes. You apply yourself to be the best that you can at what it does yes. and what you do. Right. And so when I think about that, and I know this is Black History Month, when I think about that and I looked at people who we could talk about this morning, there's a couple that came to mind, uh -huh. and I just want to share those with you this morning. One of the persons who comes to mind during this month is Josephine Baker. Uh -huh. She was born June 3rd, 1906. Take your time. She passed in April 12th, 1975. She was an American-born French dancer, singer, actress, who came to be known in various circles as the Black Pearl, the Bronze Venus, uh -huh. and even the Creole Goddess. She was known as the top of her profession, and no one else could do what she could do or dance like she could dance uh -huh. as she was sure to let the world know. Uh -huh. In other words, she said, God has given me this gift and I'm going to display it to the best of my ability. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. She said, God has given her this gift and she's going to display it to the best of her ability. What yes. is God giving you? My Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that God has given you, display it to the best of your ability. Yes. She was so good that contemporary authors, painters, designers, sculptors, Langston Hughes, Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Pablo Picasso, Christian Dior, they were all intrigued by her. Uh huh. When I think of Moses interacting on top of the mountain with God, Moses is on Mount Sinai, there to speak with God. God called Moses, and, 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 and Moses is there. God is building character in Moses so Moses can be the best man for the job yes. that God has called yes. him to do. Yes. He's going to be the deliverer of the Jews out of Egypt. Amen. And nobody, maybe somebody else could have done, did it, but God had called Moses. Yes. Some yes. things happen in life that can't nobody else do and God is calling you to do it. But he wants you to be the best that you can be. Yes. Amen, somebody. He yes. wants you to be the best. And so today, this morning... Black History Month, beginning the first Sunday of Black History Month. You know, I want to give you some tips and some ideas on how you can be your best or some ways that can help make you better here in this time and in this day in which we were living. Hallelujah. How we can be better. How I can be better. How you can be better. Because there's other people who are depending upon us yes. right here in black America, right here in America itself. Hallelujah. First, it comes from having a good attitude. Somebody yes, say, yes. good attitude. Good attitude. Good attitude. There's a scientific research that I looked up, and it says that positivity attracts abundance and success. Yes. So if you want to do your best at work, you need to cultivate and practice bringing a positive attitude yes. with you to work. Amen. You need, you need to practice having a good attitude. Yes. You can create this energy by... Doing some basic things like getting a good night's sleep, especially during the work week. You know, sometimes we work hard all day and then we try and cram in all these other activities of what we do. And you spend too much energy on one side, it's going to impact you later on the other side. Yes, yes. And so we need to understand that if we put it out, we need to recuperate through rest so we can operate at a certain level. Yes, yes. Eating properly and, 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 and resting properly and not overindulging. And so many people, you talk to them, you say, what's going on? I say, oh man, I'm tired. Uh -huh. Got up at 4.30 this morning and went to bed late last night, about 11 o'clock. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in this and I'm involved in that. Sometimes we're involved 
in too much. Mm -hmm. We're doing more than God has called us to do. Or maybe we're putting time in. We're trying to invest ourselves in too many things. And, and instead of being really great at one thing, we become mediocre at everything that we do. So my, we want to take our times and put in best practices. You know, we want to surround ourselves with positive people. Positive people. Those who are trying to do some things, those who are trying to go somewhere, yes. those who are trying to better themselves, or maybe they've already reached certain plateaus in life, and they're doing well, and we want to not just rub shoulders with them, but we want to not just try and look like them, but we want to look at the principles that they implied and that they applied in life, and work out those same type of principles. Yes. We have to learn and understand as a people that we need to fuel our own success. Hmm. In other words, our success is not dependent upon what somebody else does. Right. My success is not dependent upon what my wife does. Right. My success is not dependent upon how far my mother and my father made it or, or what my brother does or what Johnny across the street is doing. My success is built on how I apply myself yes. to going forward in life. I mean, I remember when we were little kids and they talked about the, the engine that can. And, you know, and, yeah. and all of us have yeah. this engine in us uh -huh. that, that, that we have to learn to feel. All of us all have right. this engine in us uh -huh. that we have to take care of. And so when we look at this, this little engine inside propels to go forward. Now, most of us have cars. We know if we don't put any petrol in that car, that car is not going nowhere. I don't care how you wash it, how you wax it, how you take care of it, mm -hmm. armor all the tires, the seats, the dashboard. It may be beautiful, but if it don't have any gas in it, hallelujah, it can be a 2021. If it doesn't have any gas or it's not charged, if it's electric, that car is not going nowhere. You're going to have to put some fuel in there. That's in right. the same way, we That's must right. fuel ourselves. Hallelujah. We, we must look at fuel. That fuel represents motivation. Yes, yes. So we've got to ask ourselves, what is it that motivates us for life? Yes. What is it that keeps us going? Josephine Baker put everything she had into what she did in several different areas, and she became very successful yes. in all of them. So we must fuel our engine, because if we don't, that engine will not work properly. That's then true. we have to lubricate the parts. What are you saying? We have to practice and practice until we get good and yes, better yes. and better and better. And we take care of that, and we find ways of introducing new ideas through yes. friends who are trying to do the same things that we're doing. You know, you want to be productive in life? You can't hang around with people who are not doing nothing. Right. You have to associate with them who are doing something. Thank you. That's why you have work teams. That's why you have associations and, and people are knowing one another. They encourage one another. Yes. Book clubs and all kinds of sorts of things. Sometimes that engine inside of us, that, that thing that motivates us. Yes, and, yes. And while we draw strength from it, and sometimes we draw strength from the outside, but 90% of what we get comes from the inside. You know, from the outside, I may get an idea. From the outside, somebody may give me a suggestion. But in order for me to implement or work on that idea, that has to come from the inside. Mm -hmm. How many of you have ever bought a book and you read the first chapter of that book and set it down? Mm -hmm. Never to pick it up again. And you bought another book and you mm -hmm. read the first couple of chapters and you set it down. Mm -hmm. Never to pick it up again. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we find ourselves, we invest ourselves in a thing just for a short period yes. of time. Yes. But we yes. don't really get involved. We don't, we don't finish it to the end. God is looking for us to invest ourselves fully and completely in him so we can finish it yeah. to the end. And then he wants us to take that same principle and apply it to our daily lives. Why? Because God has a plan for our lives. And we, when we commit our ways to him, trusting in him also, as yes. the word said, he, God, will bring it to pass. Yes. But we have to trust him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God has given us an understanding. He's given us a mind to work with. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so we have to plan for our own personal growth, mm -hmm. our spiritual growth, as well as our natural growth. Mm -hmm. When a baby's born, all you do is feed it, and he just grows to a certain place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and through the process, he begins to talk and walk, and, and you don't understand what he's saying, and he begins to form sentences, and then all of a sudden, those sentences begin to make sense, and as those sentences are making sense, you begin to have dialogue, and then you pour into that baby, and you see him grow, and you see him come becoming into something, you see him learning different things, and the parent helps them, but then when they reach a certain level, yes, some of that pouring in decreases. 
because that motivation in him begins to increase and he begins to make his own path. Mm -hmm. And so just like that motivation is an inside job, we have to work our way into developing our own growth and our own career plan. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. You know, sometimes you have to take that plan and you have to put that plan on paper. Yes. You might have to recruit a coach or you may have to get with a team and begin to build success strategies or you may have to figure out a way to do your best on your own, but you need to take the time to invest in yourself to do your best on your own. Why? Yes. Because you want to be your best. You want to do your best. And then after you've done your best, don't judge yourself. Hallelujah. Thank God for the okay. opportunity okay. and go on okay. to the next phase. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, we second guess, third guess, fourth guess, fifth guess, and we get so tied up <laughs> into second guessing our last guess that we get nothing Jesus. done. And Jesus. God wants us to be productive. Hallelujah. We got to trust that God has given us everything to work with. Yes. Hallelujah. Especially in our community. Because sometimes people will tell you, no, you go to apply for a job. They say, no. You go to do this. They say, no. You go to get a car. They say, no. You go to buy a house. They say, no. Sometimes you need to step back hmm. and say, what's really going on here? And don't blame nobody, although the obstacles may be real. Yes. But position yourself All right. to be the best that you can. Yes. Yes. Make sure all your ducks are in a row. Come on now. Hallelujah. Make sure all your T's are crossed and all, all your yeah, all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted. Yes. Put things into a proper perspective. And sooner or later, faith in God, God is going to bless you and yes. raise you up and he's going to help take you where you need to be because God has a plan for your life. life. Amen, somebody. Yes. When, when I was looking at this, I realized today is Super Bowl Sunday. Hallelujah. Today is the seventh Super Bowl Sunday and we yes. got to... Kansas City Chiefs and the Buccaneers, and, and everybody's looking forward to that game. They got their hearts mined up. Some people got ribs on the grill and, 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 and got other stuff going on. They, they're working it out, and, 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 and they got big plans on it. And so, but I want to look at a different sport this morning just for a few seconds. Okay. Is that all right? Uh -huh. You know, in 1947, mm -hmm. Jackie Robinson broke the color line mm -hmm. in baseball. Mm -hmm. Now, it's difficult to imagine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to imagine what uh, the what, what it felt like yes. to walk through that situation in that particular time in life. Yes. America was a totally different country than what we see today. But nonetheless, his obstacles were real. Talking about Jackie Robinson, he had to walk across the color line, he, and, and he was accepted into the baseball because he was an excellent. He was in a baseball arena because he was an excellent baseball player. You know, and, and so when you look at the excitement of Jackie Robinson's achievement, mm -hmm. a lot of people got mad. A lot of people got frustrated. Uh -huh. A lot of people were angry because he crossed over that line. They were yeah. not ready and yet prepared to deal with him in that society in which he lived at that time here in this country. But yet Jackie Robinson stood the opposition. He withstood the opposition and he stood in place. He knew what he had, he knew what he had prepared to do, and if that door was open, he was going to walk through it. And that door did open for him, and he walked through it. I said, he, the door was open, and he walked through it. Not only did he just walk through it, but he walked through it with dignity. He walked through it with respect. He walked through it with, 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 with stamina. He was prepared and built for the moment. Uh -huh. Are you prepared and built for the moment in this day and time on which you're living? Hallelujah. There are situations that are going on today that are even very similar to how life was back then. Are you prepared to deal with this thing and walk in dignity and walk in integrity, looking past all the negative dynamics, not denying them, not pretending that they're not real, but knowing that God has you on a mission and you are willing to go forward and fight the odds, not only fight the odds, but beat the odds by the power of God. The word says, not by power, not by might, but by yes. my spirit, yes. says the Lord. And so we have to have an understanding of God's word. He yes. said so we have to have an understanding of God's word so we can be successful. God's word is not just about, here I am, Lord, save me. I'm a sinner, save me. But once you are saved, there's some building blocks that God wants you to deal with. There's some understanding that God wants you to have. There's some things God wants to build in you, mm -hmm. but he wants you to participate. Amen, somebody. So when we look at this, this sports hero here, Jackie Robinson, uh -huh. Jackie Robinson, he, he encountered racism. He encountered verbal and physical abuse on the fields. 
He was a man who was great on the team, but when he got to the hotels, he wasn't recognized as anybody worthy wow. to be in the hotels. When he went to the restaurant, he wasn't recognized as somebody worthy to sit down at the table with his co-workers, his, his other teammates. Uh -huh. When he came to getting on the trains, he wasn't worthy to ride with them that were on the train. When it, when it came to public attention and other issues, mm -hmm. Some were willing to make fun of him when Jackie Robbins was taking a stance. Mm -hmm. He was taking a stance. Yes. And what Jackie Robinson did mm -hmm. for America, what he did for America, he stirred the conscience of many white folks here in this country. He gave black Americans a tre tremendous boost of pride and self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because he was at his best in character. Mm -hmm. I said, because he was at his best yes. Yes. in character. Yes. He was the best he could be. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about being the best in character, you know, my mind takes me to Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King once told the Dodgers star, Don Newcomb, another former African-American player, he said, you'll never know what Jackie Robinson, Roy Capanella, and you did to make my job easier. Wow. We all, as black Americans, stand on the shoulders of somebody else. We didn't get here by ourselves. I don't care if you drive a, uh, I, it doesn't matter what you drive or what hill you live on or right. where you live, what you've done. We all stand on the shoulders of somebody else. Amen. You see, when we look at Moses back in the scripture, Moses just a man, just an everyday man. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Called of God, and God brought him to a place. You know, when we look at the disciples who were with Jesus, just everyday man, but, but God brought them to a place. He set Jesus in front of them, and Jesus spoke a word, and they began to follow Jesus, and they followed him all the way up mm -hmm. to the hill of transfiguration, mm -hmm. the place of change. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God wants to bring change in your life. Yes. He wants to transform you. He said, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of God, yes. that you yes. present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Yes. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the, <laughs> by the renewing. Amen, by, yeah, in your mind. He said, uh -huh. be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. In other words, change your mind. Change your thinking. Joyce Myers would say, get rid of the stinking thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah. and sometimes that's just what we have to do. You're right. You know, we have to get rid of the thinking. Listen. Thinking. Thinking. Stinking thinking. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. But you know, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. We think about Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. figuratively, figuratively speaking. Okay. Top of the mountain. Okay. See, we get on top of the mountain, we want to stay on top of the mountain. And when we were kids, we play a game, king of the hill. You know, and, and so we go through that. We try and knock each other off and stand up on the hill. You know, mm -hmm. they're building a house or a complex over there, we go play in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And we go play king of the hill. And mm -hmm. all of us about the same age, same size. We play, you know, just a little game we play. But that game is not that, that that game is not just a game for some people. Mm -hmm. They're serious. They want to be the king of the hill. Mm -hmm. They want to be involved in any part of it. They got to be the man. Well, I want you to know this morning, Jesus is the man. Come on, we Pastor. will never yes, yes. be the man. But all Jesus expects of us Ooh. is that we do the best that yes, we can. Yes. Amen. Somebody, you know, yes. the key is not about staying on top of the mountain, or, or but it's about who you deal with and how you deal with. People, when you come back down off the mountain, I see Moses, like the disciples, and just like Dr. Martin Luther King, God made their job easier by spreading the message. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Moses and and, and, and Jesus, mm -hmm. according to Scripture, what they did, Martin Luther King said, made my job easier by spreading the message. Mm -hmm. So he can come behind him and he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Then he explained to people how and why they need to repent, what it was that they need to change. Mark, Martin Luther King was a civil rights leader. Right. There was civil oppression yeah. going on when Martin Luther King was alive and he was coming against yes. that civil yes. oppression. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes, yes. Glory to God. Amen. You know, they're, 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 are you saying something? No, no, sir. I'm enjoying it. Okay. Hallelujah. Martin Luther King, he said, making the job of God easy by spreading the word. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was thinking about that. And I went back to one of his sermons, one of his sermons on October 26, 1967, and he asked a question. Martin Luther King said, I want to ask a question. He said, what is your life's blueprint? Mm -hmm. Whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint. 
And that blueprint serves as a pattern, as the guide, as the building is not well erected without a good, solid blueprint. Mm -hmm. Now each of you is in the process of building a structure of your lives. And the question is whether you have a proper, solid, sound blueprint. I want to suggest some things that should be in your life's blueprint, Martin said. Number one is in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your own somebodyness. Martin Luther King is telling you that you are somebody. You mm. need to realize that you are somebody. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He's saying you need to have a blueprint for your life. Mm -hmm. So your blueprint, when, when you go down in prayer, you spend some time with God. God will give you a blueprint mm -hmm. for your life. Amen. And, and, and he said, don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. That's right. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. That's right. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have the basic principles that the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. Yes. He said, in other words, you know, you need to apply yourself to be the best that you can. He said, you're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life and what your work will be. Set out to do it well. This is Martin in his speech. His speech was powerful and it was resonating with the minds of many people because it, it put people on a track to saying, I don't care what society says about yeah. me. But I have opportunity to do things for myself. Mm -hmm. In other words, I have opportunity to be the best me that I can yes, be. Yes. And he says, I say unto you, my young friends, yes. doors are opening to you, doors of opportunities that will not open to your mothers and fathers. And the great challenges facing you is to be ready to face these doors as they open. Yes, yes. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great essays, said in a lecture in 1871, if a man can write a better book, Mm -hmm. or preach a better sermon, mm -hmm. make a better mousetrap than his neighbor. Even if he builds a house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. Yes, Amen. Yes, I know yes. y'all don't like me reading this, but this is Black History Month, and this is one of the greatest leaders mm -hmm. in, in black America. And we need to hear this on this morning. He said, and when you discover, or I'm sorry, this hasn't been true, but it will become, he said, man will make a beaten path to your door. Then right. he went on to say, this hasn't always been true, but it will become increasingly true. Yes. And so I would urge you to study hard, to burn the midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school. Mm -hmm. I understand all the psych sociological reasons, but I urge you that in spite of your economic plight, in spite of the situation that you are forced to live, stay in school. Mm -hmm. And when you discover what you will be in your life, set out to do it as God Almighty had called you at this particular moment in history to do it. Don't just set out to do just a good job. Yes. Set out to do such a good job that the living, the dead, or the unborn couldn't do it any better. Wow. In other words, Martin Luther King is saying, do your very yes, best. Yes, yes. Then he went on to say, and most people heard this part, if it falls your lot in life to be a street sweeper, Sweet streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweet streets like Beethoven composed music. Yeah. Sweet streets like Leotine Price sings before the Metropolitan yeah. Opera. Yeah. Sweet streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Mm -hmm. Sweet streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. Uh -huh. If you can pine... If you can't be a pine on top of a hill, be a shrub in the valley. Yeah. But be the best shrub on the side of the hill. Uh, if you be a bush, if you can't be a tree, if you can't be a highway, be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by the size that you win or fall. Be the best, whatever you are. Dr. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's a time where we go behind the veil, uh -huh. there's a time where we come out from behind the veil. But what's important is that we live beyond the veil. Mm -hmm. We can't get saved and hide ourselves from this society. This society is in trouble. We saw what happened a few weeks ago and, and all of these people got mixed up minds and, 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 and just 
people are out to hurt people for no reason other than other than they can't have things their way. Yes. Other people want things so far to the left that that it is it, it, out of the will of God. Many believe, and 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 it's, it, it seems like everybody wants something, but nobody wants what's right. And there's very few wow. who think they want what's right, but don't know what right is. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I believe what's right. We it, it is where Scripture says, "If my people." which are called by my name. God yes. is speaking. Yes. He said, my people, we need to first make sure that we're God's people. Repent from sin. Turn yes. from, uh, yes. Repent from sin. Turn from our wicked ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to seek the face of God. Yes. You know, make sure that we are in right standing with God. Turn from our wicked ways. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just hide what we're doing. Don't just put the veil on and hide what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Talked to a fellow the other day. I met him sometime back, a pastor, and he had his veil on. I had my veil on. And then talk to him again, and we didn't know that we've already met because we couldn't see each other because of the veil. So there's a life behind the veil, uh -huh. and we got to come out from behind that veil and truly live as God has called us to live. We got to quit hiding. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. we can. We can cover up. Sometimes people can't respect who you are because you're saved. Won't respect who you are because you've given your heart to God. But you can't let oh that worry. You stand in faith and you stand strong in God. Yes, Realizing yes. he that called you, he that begun a good work in you, is going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We have to commit our ways unto the Lord. Commit our works unto the Lord. Yes. Trusting in him that we know that he's going to bring those things to pass. The path that he's placed us on. He's Jesus. called us. He's working it out in Thank us. You, and he, we, we're going to allow God to do it. Amen, somebody. Amen. So, 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 so we, there's a life beyond the veil. Yes, yes, yes. We can't be yellow in how we do what we do. We hmm. can't be pink, afraid, and, and, and soft. We have to be strong. And, 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 and con our, our, our face has to be set like a flint, you know, trusting in God. We have to have backbone sometimes in uncomfortable situations yes. where we don't deny our heritage in heaven for, for association here on the ground. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We can't pretend that that, that that we're okay and we're not. We can't right. fake it one way. We can't fake right and go left. Hallelujah. But we do have to be pure. Yes. We do have to be honest. And if we're not honest with ourselves, we're set up for failure. Amen, somebody. There's Amen. a life beyond the veil. Yes. Moses, through this process, <laughs> when he went up on the hill, mm -hmm. talked to God. Then when he came down off the hill, yes. He didn't want to offend the people because they were afraid. Mm -hmm. But after a while, for Moses, life did get back to normal. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Even though Moses talked to God, most things, things got back to normal. We need to normalize walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. We need to normalize walking in the glory of God. We need to normalize having a good understanding of scripture and having a biblical perspective when it comes to our life, everyday living. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to have a biblical worldview in order to be successful That's right. in this life. That's and the right. only way to do that, we need to normalize prayer and study of the scripture. Amen, somebody. Amen. Listen, I don't know about you this morning. I know your mind may be set on this Super Bowl game later on today. <laughs> and I hope your team wins. I'm not going to tell you who I'm rooting for, but I'm hoping my team wins. Hallelujah. Mm. And, and, and I started wearing my wife cracked up on me the other day. I told her I was going to wear my team jersey. I got a Harley Davidson baseball shirt. It says Harley Davidson, Pastor Bill on it. Harley Davidson on the back. You know, that's my team. That's what I said I was going to wear. You know, and she cracked up on me. But, you know, she got me to an outfit here. So this is what I got on today. Right. Amen. But, you know, it's Black History Month. And so, you know, we, uh, I, in other words, I don't really have a football team. I, I don't have any skin in this game. You know, is what okay. I'm saying. So, you know, but it's not about that. It's about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. If you hadn't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. But he came through him that the world might be saved. Hallelujah. And if yes. you're not saved today, this is a great opportunity yes. to give your heart to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Allow God to do his best in you and you can do your best in society. And you can begin to live again. Hallelujah. You can have hopes and dreams and, and things can get better in your life. Amen, somebody. Here, listen. Repeat this prayer after me. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And after three days dead, God raised you from the dead. And you're in heaven now interceding for me. 
I believe that you're the son of God. And you were sent here to save me. Yes. Hallelujah. Not just me, but save all of us. Yes. Hallelujah. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for this gift of salvation. Thank you, God. Listen, if you accepted the Christ this morning, I want you to email me at billpendlin at dayspring.ch. All lowercase, billpendlin at d-a-y-s-p-r-i-n-g dot c-h. I'd like to hear from you and like to share some scriptures with you. Amen. God bless you. The Lord loves you. And I do too. God bless you, Pastor Bill. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. Beyond the veil. There is life beyond the veil where the truth is revealed. We praise God for that powerful word on this morning, and we thank God, amen, for you tuning in to Facebook Live to join us for that word from Pastor Bill Penland. After my observations on this morning, we will be partaking in Holy Communion, which is an ordinance of the church that we participate in every first Sunday. We ask that you join us. If you haven't prepared with your juice and your cracker, you may take the opportunity to do so right now. I'll be calling Pastor Bill back up shortly and he will uh, present the Holy Communion for us. Amen and amen. I'd just like to uh, give a couple of, I guess you can call this a shout out. I want to say happy birthday to Sister Gigi. Amen. She follows us quite often. She is a jewel of a young lady and she had a birthday on last week. And I just want to say, Sister Gigi, we love you so much. And I want to say happy birthday to you from Pastor Bill and I. Additionally, I want you to remember to pray for those uh, who have lost ones due to the pandemic or whatever the plight may have been that caused them to not be here with us today, to cause them to have passed away. But whenever we hear about a friend or family member that has passed away, we, actually, we really need to pray. We need to pray for the strength of our friends and our loved ones. I would just like to ask you on this morning to continue to pray for the family of Phil Lewis. They suffered a loss uh, several weeks ago, last month I believe it was, just very recently. And you need to continually pray for that family, for the strength of the family. That family is very dear, near and close to the heart of Pastor Bill and I. And we want you along with us to continually pray for the strength of the family of Brother Phil Lewis. Additionally, uh, we are praying for uh, Rodney. He's the son of a cousin, my cousin Cecilia Penlin. We want you to pray for his health, that the Lord will bring him to uh, good health at this time. Uh, also, um, Sister Narvaez, she's a member of Day Spring Ministries, continue to pray for her family. The Turner family, has lost a, a, a matriarch. Pastor Bill will be officiating that funeral very soon. Please pray for the Turner family. Uh, they need your prayers, and we hope that the Lord is giving them strength even now. We pray that God is holding them in the hollow of his hand as they go through this loss. Well, amen and amen. And we trust that you will pray along with Pastor Bill and myself. At this time, we're going to prepare to take the communion, and I will be coming back with another uh, announcement after which I have the word right here. I have the Bible already set up. Everything is set up for us, Pastor Bill. You don't have to do anything other than come and partake of communion. Amen. God bless you. Are you ready with your uh, juice and your cracker? So that we can partake in Holy Communion. And please don't forget Valentine's Day. Don't let somebody be mad at you on February 14th. Okay? Don't 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 get uh, told off or, or get read to right. So don't forget Valentine's Day. I know you won't do that anyway. So I'm just, just reminding you. Amen. Pastor Bill. Amen. Let me know when you want me to read. Read. For I have received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. This wafer represents the Lord's body. Now, in Old Testament times, for someone to say, this is my body and eat it, you know, it was against Jewish law for them to eat human flesh or to drink human blood. But this is symbolic of Jesus' sacrifice on the altar of God, what we know as Calvary, the cross. And so we're going to take the wafer, we're going to eat the wafer, and then we're going to drink the juice, and then I'm going to pray. So I want you to take your wafer, and I want you to eat the wafer. Take your juice, and drink your juice. Amen. The wafer represents the body of Christ. The juice represents the blood of Christ. Amen. Now, it's symbolic. And it's suggested it shows that we are one in body with Jesus Christ. That we are part of the body of Christ. Amen. And so, with that being said, I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are the engrafted part of the body of Jesus Christ. How Amen. you have invited us in. And therefore, through adoption, as your dear children, God, we say thank you. And God, we ask that you continue to bless us and strengthen us as we take time in prayer, study of your word. Yes. Cause us to be like that tree planted by the rivers of water. Yes. Yielding forth its fruit in its season, oh God. Where those around us can be nurtured from us. Yes, God. Those can be sheltered from us, oh God. That we can add value to the life of somebody else. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for Holy Communion. Amen. As I stated earlier, I want to remind you, every first Sunday of the month, participate with us in Holy Communion. Amen. If you don't have grape juice, whatever you have to drink, orange juice, whatever, um, and a wafer, it could be a saltine, whatever, some semblance of the juice in the crap cracker, be prepared on first Sunday, you know, to join Pastor Bill and I, Day Spring Ministries um, in uh, Holy Communion. Amen. If you have heard something on this morning that has blessed your heart, perhaps you'd like to send an offering, and I will let you know how that can be done. Or if you'd like to pay tithe to Day Spring Ministries, there are several ways in which you can do that. You may go to our website at www.dayspring.com ch and I'll say that again www.dayspring.ch or you can text to give to dayspring m capital d a y s p r i n g m as in mary and you can text to 206-859-9405 206-859-9405 if you want to mail in you can mail to Dayspring Ministries, P.O. Box 432, Menifee, California, 92586. God bless you. And we want to thank all of you for your contributions that you send to Dayspring Ministries. We want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you for supporting the work of the Lord that we do uh, from week to week at Dayspring Ministries. From, past, from the heart of Pastor Bill Pennant and myself, we love you, love you, love you. A bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. Amen and amen. I just want to remind you that faithfulness is the price of the crown. Let us all do our very best to support the entire program of our church. We want to see you on Sundays as well.